Hi, and welcome to Smash Ultimate Basics, where we remind you to play hard, have fun, and don't step on the C4. Uh oh. My name is Bro Cross, and today we're going to be covering how to configure your controls. This guide will not solely be about my control setup, though we'll go over it towards the end. And this guide will not tell you the definitive best setup in existence. Because no such thing exists. Actually, part of the reason why I'm making this is because all of these clickbait titles that tell you there's a best setup before just going over their own controls. There isn't one. There are, however, plenty of rules you should potentially follow depending on factors we'll get into. It's these unwritten rules and how they apply that we're going to cover in this guide. Just a disclaimer though, I'll only be referring to GameCube and Switch Pro controller layouts. I will not be talking about single Joy-Cons. Since if you are using them for tournaments, or especially while on our esports team, I have no words. This guide will also assume you watched or understand all the concepts in my previous combo guide, so if you don't know what certain tech or concepts mean, I'll just leave a link in the description for you to go watch that first. Without further ado, let's get into the rules. There are three main concepts you need to know and understand before changing your controls. Function, convenience, and comfort. Function in this case is essentially how many techniques or tech you can utilize that are relevant to your character. Some tech requires you to change your controls to perform them, such as tilt canceling, and depending on your character it might be essential for their kit. Pikachu, for example, relies heavily on tilt canceling to start bear combos at low and mid percent. Should be relevant to your character, however. While Sora relies heavily on instant double jump or IDJ, Link only uses it for one somewhat untrue 50-50 setup, and so it's not especially important for Link mains to change their controls for it. And finally, function is dependent on both the controller you use and the specific grip type you have. Tilt cancelling generally requires you to bind jump to a shoulder button, but if you play claw or something of the sort, that isn't necessary, as you still have access to both your face buttons and your tilt stick at the same time. Actually, having jump set to a shoulder button will give you access to a whole lot of tech unless you play claw, in which case you could already do it anyway. Convenience refers to ease of use, or how easy it is to perform certain tasks. Things that could be functional may not be optimized for the easiest use. On default controls, doing an up tilt though more than possible is extremely difficult in the middle of a battle. If you flick the stick too hard, you'll tap jump, and if you flick it too hard and press A, you might be stuck in the middle of a smash attack. To make up tilt more accessible, you've got two main options. Either disable tap jump, or set your right stick to tilt attack. I generally recommend the former to characters that rely heavily on smash attacks, such as Olimar, and the latter to people in general that are already used to tap jump and don't use a character that relies on spamming up tilt to start combos. Your third and final option is to do both, which is what I did, but any of the three options I mentioned would be fine. The only wrong option here is leaving tap jump in the right stick as default which may bring up a few questions on why Sakurai thought that the objectively worst setup should be the normal one, but hey, I'm not throwing any shade. There is one more objective sort of convenience rule I can tell you, and it has to do with smash attacks and the stick sensitivity option. There's a lot of misconceptions about stick sensitivity, thanks in no small part to the amazingly concise and digestible description, Sakurai. So I'll do my best to clear it up here. Stick sensitivity does not increase or decrease the amount of force or distance needed to enter a dash, raise or lower dead zones, or increase or decrease distance or force needed for a smash attack or tap jump. The only thing it does is increase the frame window between when you flick your stick and when you press A for a smash attack. The game gives you a little bit of leeway between when you flick your stick and when you press A to get a smash attack, that being about uh, either 4 to 6 frames depending on your specific directional attack. Changing the stick sensitivity will lower this by 1 frame if you set it to low, down to 3 or 5 frames, and raise it by 1 if set to high, so 5 to 7 frames. So if you have your right stick set to tilt attack, then you should probably raise your stick sensitivity to get a bigger frame window to perform them. If you use your right stick for smash attacks, however, then you should probably set your stick sensitivity to low to avoid potential misinputs. Aside from that, convenience can simply mean whatever works best for you and your preferences. Maybe you're a lefty and prefer having an attack on your left shoulder, or maybe you're on a GameCube controller and find that grab is faster and easier to press on one of the face buttons than on one of those stupidly big triggers. 
The point is that you want to be able to find the setup that makes everything you need to do as easy as possible. The last concept is comfort, and this one is arguably the most important. Comfort refers to both how natural the controls feel and your overall health. If you see one of those best setups for whichever character and try to force yourself to use that exact configuration, chances are it's not going to make sense to you for a long while and you may even hurt yourself for trying to use it. RSI and carpal tunnel are really common injuries in this field, so if anything feels uncomfortable or not right, then change it till it does. This also applies to grip styles as well. If claw or some other grip doesn't feel good for your hand, then go back to whatever grip works for you. If you have small hands and struggle to hit the trigger buttons consistently for grab or shield, I mean firstly consider buying a smaller controller, but also maybe rebinding grab and shield to uh, one of the other shoulder buttons or maybe to a face button would go a long way to reduce strain and improve your overall health. That or you could maybe use a grip like this. I mean, it worked okay for me back in my middle school days. Overall, just use a control scheme that feels natural and comfortable to use. Your wrists and fingers will thank you for it. So essentially, just remap your controls to have the ability to use the most tech relevant to your character possible, optimize it to make it as easy as possible, and make sure it feels natural and comfortable for your hands. That's all well and good, but how does one actually go through that process? Well, although every individual case is specific, and as such I can't tell you definitively how to do it, I think seeing how I got to my control setup will help you develop your own. Before you see what my controls are, here's a bit of context. I'm a Link main with both Ices and Lucina as a secondary, so I use item, desync, and movement tech quite frequently. For my controller, I used to use my Power A Fusion before it broke a sad 9 months into its existence. But now I'm trying out the 8 that do ultimate. So yeah, basically a Switch Pro controller. I use a standard grip, no claw, but I used to have a grip like this for a while. As far as my controls go, I operate under the philosophy of separating my movement from my actions as much as possible, which essentially means that I don't like controlling attacks with the same hand that I move or jump with. I played Smash Bros for years on my 3DS before switching to Ultimate, so those were the controls I was used to when transitioning about a year ago. The only change I made to my 3DS controls was to disable tap jump. So with that context out of the way, here are my controls. One of the first major changes I made was to set my right stick to tilt attack. Because I played originally on my 3DS, I was used to having the control stick for smash attacks and didn't use the right stick for anything really. I was having trouble getting consistent forward tilts, so I set it to tilt attack for the convenience it gave me and went from there. I also have tap jump disabled since it's a lot more comfortable that way for me personally. While we're still in additional settings, there are two other major changes I made enabling AB smash attacks and setting stick sensitivity to high. The latter was to give me a bigger window to do smash attacks as we went over earlier and the former is to allow for easier buffering with smash attacks. While you can't traditionally hold buffer smash attacks, enabling AB smash lets you, allowing for easier timing for things like Link's Nair to F smash or Icy's forward throw F smash. I also have rumble off since after almost a year of using controls without it, it's more comfortable with, for me with it off. Back to the main binds and you'll see that I have grab on my left trigger, jump on left shoulder, and attack on the right shoulder. I changed grab to left trigger originally because it felt more natural to have that as my grab button, probably because of my 3DS days of having grab and shield leveled parallel with each other. I put jump on my left shoulder originally for the functionality of it, as it let me do tilt cancelling and IDJs even though it wasn't really necessary for me to do that. It also made certain things like Zax and Isaac much easier, since two of the three buttons I needed to do it were right next to each other. Originally, I wanted to put jump on my right trigger as I'm right handed, but I found that jumping with one hand while inputting an attack with the other is a whole lot easier than trying to do it all in one. So basically, it was for convenience. The last major change I did was to set attack to my right shoulder, and it was essentially a comfort or convenience change. I find it to be a lot clunkier to press A for Link's Nair before trying to come all the way down to the right stick to input a down tilt just for me to finish the combo. Of course, I could have just gotten used to using the control stick for tilts, but like I said before, I really try to separate my movement from my attacks. I still press A for my jab and smash attacks, but I use the right stick for all of my tilts and directional aerials, so really the right shoulder is just a glorified Nair button. Hey, what can I say? I'm a Link main. <laughs> 
And anyway, now all three of the buttons I need for Isaacs are right next to each other, making it legitimately as easy as it can possibly be. One change I'm considering making is to bind wide a shield, as I never use it anyway and it allows for more shield tech. If you hold two shield buttons at the same time, you can move it around without dodging or rolling, allowing you to prevent yourself from getting hit in your shield, also known as shield poking for longer. So there you have it, my entire control setup. Honestly, it's not overly different from the default controls. I still use X for full hop delayed aerials and recovery, A for jabs and smash attacks, and B is the one special button that hasn't changed. Most of the changes I made were to utilize redundant or hardly used buttons to make certain things possible or to make my life easier. You may also see that I've sort of separated the movement out to my left hand with attacks being reserved for my right. I've optimized my controls to get the most relevant functionality in the easiest way possible with a natural and comfortable feel. What works for me may not work for you though, so I strongly encourage you to try and find the quote unquote best setup yourself. Look for tech that's integral to your character, such as Sora's IDJ, and find the easiest and most comfortable way to support that tech, which in this case probably means putting jump to a shoulder button. Find consistency issues you have, maybe you keep inputting up smash instead of up tilt, and try solving it with a change in your controls, this case having both the option to set your right stick to tilt attack, and the option to decrease your stick sensitivity to low. To summarize, there are three main concepts you need to know when changing controls. Function, convenience, and comfort. Function is where you map your controls in a way to allow for the most essential for your character techniques possible. An example being setting your right stick to tilt attack for tilt canceling. Convenience is trying to make said techniques as easy as possible. An example being setting grab to Y if it's easier than pressing shoulder for you or freeze up a shoulder button for jump or attack. And finally, comfort is making your controls as natural feeling as possible to avoid injury. We also went over my controls and the thought process behind each change, and lastly, over general ideas for when and where you should change your controls. Follow this guide in its entirety, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, that you're still gonna step on that C4 regardless. <laughs> If you made it to the end and found this guide helpful, then a like and sub would be greatly appreciated. I'm currently prepping to move to a summer home against my will. The reasons for my resentment won't be stated here, but needless to say, the move will probably slow down my fairly loose upload schedule quite a bit. At the time of writing this, I have absolutely no idea what I should cover next. So team member or otherwise, I'd love to hear what you want to see. Thanks for the continued support, and yeah, that's about it. See ya.